In recent years, the world has become a much smaller place, with everything being mapped out and no location hidden from satellites. With that being said, there are still some things we don't understand. In this video, we count down five unsolved mysteries. The Boiling River of the Amazon This scalding hot river was thought to be a myth, until one geoscientist made it his quest to study the mystical waters. Hidden in the dense jungle of the Peruvian Amazon is a rolling river. The steaming turquoise waters that can reach up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit are guided by ivory-coloured stones, and guarded by 60-foot walls of lush forest and vegetation. Locals believe that the river was sacred and that the hot waters held healing powers, and shamans incorporated it into medicines. The water temperature ranges from 120 degrees up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, and it reaches 16 feet deep in some places. The mud of the riverbank is too hot to walk on, and if you did your skin would be covered in third degree burns in less than a second. Small unfortunate animals like frogs can be found broiled in the water. There is no confirmation regarding how the phenomenon came to be, but it's been suggested a drilling company accidentally ruptured a geothermal system, releasing gases from inside the earth into the river. Chimpanzees represent our closest living relative, sharing 98% of our genetic DNA. They live in vast social communities consisting of up to 50 individuals and comprising of several family groups. They have strict hierarchies, with one dominant alpha male. Chimps are one of few animals that are known to make and use tools. They have been observed stripping the leaves off a twig and then dipping it into a termite nest to catch the insects and chewing the end of a stick to make it more water absorbent so it can be used as a dipping stick. Kevin Hunt, director of the Human Origins and Primate Evolution Lab in Indiana University said the following, If you shave a chimpanzee and took a photo of its body from neck to the waist, at first glance you wouldn't really notice that it isn't human. The two species musculature is extremely similar, but somehow pound for pound chimps are between two to four times stronger than humans. It's unclear why we're so much wimpier than our closest hominid relatives. Perhaps our muscle attachment points differ, or our muscle fibres could be less dense. Either way, the result is slightly humiliating. Once in an African forest, Hunt watched an 80-pound female chimp snap branches off an ironwood tree with her fingertips. It took Hunt two hands and all the strength he could muster to snap an equally thick branch. There's at least two Jersey Devils, the variety found in folklore dating between 1735 to 1909, and the Jersey Devil of modern sightings. The Jersey Devil of folklore has hoofs, a snake tail, bat wings, and a head that looks something like a horse. Altogether, it roughly resembles a kangaroo-like dragon. In fact, it was described as a dragon by many of the early witnesses. The Jersey Devil of modern sightings is a bunch of different things. The name has been applied to cryptids that more or less resemble the original Jersey Devil, but it's also applied to nearly every New Jersey cryptid imaginable, such as hairy humanoids that resemble Bigfoot, mystery birds and even eastern cougars. One Jersey Devil sighting described a hairy humanoid with a deer's head and glowing red eyes. In 1934 near South Pittsburgh, Tennessee, a phantom kangaroo or kangaroo-like beast was reported by several witnesses over a five-day period. The mysterious beast was said to have been very aggressive. Kangaroos are typically unaggressive and vegetarian. A witness described the animal as looking like a kangaroo running and leaping across a field. A search party followed the animal's tracks to a mountainside cave where they stopped. During the week of January the 16th, 1909, newspapers of the time published hundreds of claim encounters with the Jersey Devil from all over the state. Among alleged encounters publicised that week were claims the creature attacked a trolley car in Haddon Heights, and a social club in Camden. Police in Camden and Bristol, Pennsylvania supposedly fired on the creature to no effect. Other reports initially concerned unidentified footprints in the snow, but soon sightings of the creature resembling the Jersey Devil were being reported throughout South Jersey and as far away as Delaware and Western Maryland. On January the 19th, 1909, Mr. and Mrs. Evans were awakened in the early morning by the sound of a large animal on the roof of their shed. 
They described it as about three and a half feet high, with a face like a collie and a head like a horse. It had a long neck, wings about two feet long, and its back legs were like those of a crane, and it had horse's hooves. It walked on its back legs and held up two short front legs with paws on them. One afternoon of that same week, a Mrs. White was taking clothes off her line when she noticed a strange creature huddled in the corner of her garden. She screamed and fainted, and her husband rushed out the back door to find his wife on the ground and the creature close by. She chased the monster and it leapt over the fence and vanished. Then as suddenly as it had come, the creature and sightings had vanished. The creature did not return until 1927. A cab driver was changing a tire one night. He had just finished when his car began shaking violently. He looked up to see a gigantic winged creature pounding on the roof of his car. The driver, leaving his jack and flat tire behind, jumped into the car and quickly drove away. He reported the encounter to the police. In August 1930, Berry Pickers at Leeds Point and Maze Landing reported seeing the creature, crashing through the fields and devouring blueberries and cranberries. It was reported again two weeks later to the north and then disappeared again. Today there's only a few isolated sightings of the creature. It seems as though the paved roads, electric lights and modern conventions that have come to the region over the course of two and a half centuries have driven the monster so far into hiding that it's vanished altogether. The lack of proof of the monster in modern times leads many to believe the creature was nothing more than a creation of New Jersey folklore. But how does one explain the witness accounts from reliable people like businessmen, police officers and even public officials? Remy van Leer was a Belgian pilot who became well known for his heroic exploits during World War II. Among other feats, he escaped from a German prisoner of war camp and made it safely to Britain where he became an ace in the Royal Air Force, but his famous monster sighting came years later. According to Van Leerd, he was flying over the jungle in a helicopter when he spotted a giant snake. It was very green and had a white belly, which he estimated was over 50 feet in length. In his account, the serpent reared up as though it wanted to attack the helicopter. He even managed to snap a picture of the beast, which is now well known in cryptozoological circles. Unfortunately, the picture doesn't provide anything to indicate the scale, so it can't be used as proof that the snake was really that enormous. Still, he insisted that the monster was a true giant, and could have easily have eaten up a man if it wanted to. One very exciting area of cryptozoology is that of apparent dinosaurs who have somehow survived up to the present day. The thought of having real dinosaurs still prowling the wild places of the world as they did millions of years ago is exciting. Such mysterious creatures can be found in many reports from the deepest darkest jungles of Africa to the rainforests of South America. Yet you don't necessarily have to go so far away to such isolated spots to find accounts of supposedly being dinosaurs in the modern age. In the southwestern United States there have long been reports of dinosaurs roaming about, apparently very much alive and well. Tales of dinosaurs in the American Southwest go back to the frontier Wild West days of cowboys and Indians. Among some of the most talked about and famous of the dinosaurs of the West are the various large pterodactyl type creatures, said to have been sighted throughout the 1800s and beyond, and which were already known to the native peoples of the region as Thunderbirds. The story of this photo's existence was corroborated by writer H.M. Crowner in a 1963 article in Fate magazine and renowned cryptozoologist Ivan Sanderson claimed that he actually owned a photocopy of the photo. From there, the legend of the now notorious Thunderbird photo really took off. People began to come out of the woodwork swearing they'd seen the photo on TV, in books or in magazines, but in every case no actual copy could ever be tracked down. The question of the elusive photo's existence became a popular topic within the realm of cryptozoology, inciting heated debate and speculation. In-depth investigations into the claims of the photo being printed in the tombstone epitaph were carried out, yet looking back deeply into the newspaper's archives showed that no such picture was ever published, and there had been no follow-up article. Others searched all editions of various books in which people had sworn they'd seen the photo, but it turned out that no such photo had ever been published in any of them. Some people have sworn that the picture was most certainly in a particular book, 
only to find that the photo was gone when they looked there. Over the years, photos have occasionally been brought forward and claimed to be the supposed lost Thunderbird photo, but none of them seem to be exactly what was described in the original or what people insisted they remember seeing. Whether the photo really existed or not, there were certainly a lot of reports of flying pterodactyl-like creatures during the era. So that was 5 Unsolved Mysteries. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more countdown videos.